The mathematics of general relativity refers to various mathematical structures and techniques that are used in studying and formulating Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity. The main tools used in this geometrical theory of gravitation are tensor fields defined on a Lorentzian manifold representing spacetime. This article is a general description of the mathematics of general relativity. Note, general relativity articles using tensors will use the abstract index notation. Tensors The principle of general covariance states that the laws of physics should take the same mathematical form in all reference frames and was one of the central principles in the development of general relativity. The term general covariance was used in the early formulation of general relativity, but is now referred to by many as diffeomorphism covariance. Although diffeomorphism covariance is not the defining feature of general relativity one, and controversies remain regarding its present status in general relativity, the invariance property of physical laws implied in the principle coupled with the fact that the theory is essentially geometrical in character making use of geometries which are not Euclidean suggested that general relativity be formulated using the language of tensors. This will be discussed further below. Spacetime as a manifold Most modern approaches to mathematical general relativity begin with the concept of a manifold. More precisely, the basic physical construct representing gravitation, a curved spacetime, is modeled by a four-dimensional, smooth, connected, Lorentzian manifold. Other physical descriptors are represented by various tensors, discussed below. The rationale for choosing a manifold as the fundamental mathematical structure is to reflect desirable physical properties. For example, in the theory of manifolds, each point is contained in a by no means unique coordinate chart, and this chart can be thought of as representing the local spacetime around the observer represented by the point. The principle of local Lorentz covariance, which states that the laws of special relativity hold locally about each point of spacetime, lends further support to the choice of a manifold structure for representing spacetime, as locally around a point on a general manifold, the region looks like, or approximates very closely Minkowski space flat spacetime. The idea of coordinate charts as local observers who can perform measurements in their vicinity also makes good physical sense, as this is how one actually collects physical data, locally. For cosmological problems, a coordinate chart may be quite large. <laughs> <laughs> Local versus global structure An important distinction in physics is the difference between local and global structures. Measurements in physics are performed in a relatively small region of spacetime and this is one reason for studying the local structure of spacetime in general relativity, whereas determining the global spacetime structure is important, especially in cosmological problems. An important problem in general relativity is to tell when two spacetimes are the same, at least locally. This problem has its roots in manifold theory where determining if two Riemannian manifolds of the same dimension are locally isometric locally the same. This latter problem has been solved and its adaptation for general relativity is called the carton karlheide algorithm. <laughs> Tensors in general relativity One of the profound consequences of relativity theory was the abolition of privileged reference frames. The description of physical phenomena should not depend upon who does the measuring, one reference frame should be as good as any other. Special relativity demonstrated that no inertial reference frame was preferential to any other inertial reference frame, but preferred inertial reference frames over non-inertial reference frames. General relativity eliminated preference for inertial reference frames by showing that there is no preferred reference frame inertial or not for describing nature. Any observer can make measurements and the precise numerical quantities obtained only depend on the coordinate system used. This suggested a way of formulating relativity using invariant structures, those that are independent of the coordinate system represented by the observer used, yet still have an independent existence. The most suitable mathematical structure seemed to be a tensor. 
For example, when measuring the electric and magnetic fields produced by an accelerating charge, the values of the fields will depend on the coordinate system used, but the fields are regarded as having an independent existence, this independence represented by the electromagnetic tensor. Mathematically, tensors are generalized linear operators, multilinear maps. As such, the ideas of linear algebra are employed to study tensors. At each point p p of a manifold, the tangent and cotangent spaces to the manifold at that point may be constructed. Vectors sometimes referred to as contravariant vectors are defined as elements of the tangent space and covectors sometimes termed covariant vectors, but more commonly dual vectors or one forms are elements of the cotangent space. P display style P these two vector spaces may be used to construct type R s display style left R s right tensors which are real valued multilinear maps acting on the direct sum of R display style R copies of the cotangent space with s display style s copies of the tangent space the set of all such multilinear maps forms a vector space, called the tensor product space of type R S display style left R S right at P display style P and denoted by T P S R M display style left t underscore p right underscore s caret r m if the tangent space is n dimensional it can be shown that dim t p s r m equals n r plus s Display style dim t underscore p underscore s caret r m equals n caret r plus s. In the general relativity literature, it is conventional to use the component syntax for tensors. A type R s tensor may be written as t equals t a one a r b one B S X A one X A R D X B one D X B S Display style T equals T carrot a underscore one L dots a underscore R underscore B underscore one L dots B underscore S F R A C partial partial X carrot a underscore one O times L dots O times F R A C partial partial X carrot a underscore R O times D X carrot B underscore one O times L dots O times D X carrot B underscore S where X A I Display style frac partial partial x caret a underscore i is a basis for the ith tangent space and d x b j display style d x caret b underscore j a basis for the jth cotangent space. As spacetime is assumed to be four-dimensional, each index on a tensor can be one of four values. Hence, the total number of elements a tensor possesses equals 4R, where R is the sum of the numbers of covariant and contravariant indices on the tensor a number called the rank of the tensor. Symmetric and antisymmetric tensors Some physical quantities are represented by tensors not all of whose components are independent. Important examples of such tensors include symmetric and antisymmetric tensors. Antisymmetric tensors are commonly used to represent rotations for example, the vorticity tensor. Although a generic rank R tensor in four dimensions has four R components, constraints on the tensor such as symmetry or antisymmetry serve to reduce the number of distinct components. For example, a symmetric rank II tensor T T satisfies t alpha 
beta equals t beta alpha display style t underscore alpha beta equals t underscore beta alpha and possesses 10 independent components whereas an antisymmetric skew symmetric rank 2 tensor p display style p satisfies p alpha beta equals minus p beta alpha display style p underscore alpha beta equals p underscore beta alpha and has six independent components for ranks greater than two the symmetric or antisymmetric index pairs must be explicitly identified antisymmetric tensors of rank two play important roles in relativity theory the set of all such tensors, often called bivectors, forms a vector space of dimension 6, sometimes called bivector space. The metric tensor The metric tensor is a central object in general relativity that describes the local geometry of spacetime as a result of solving the Einstein field equations. Using the weak field approximation, the metric can also be thought of as representing the gravitational potential. The metric tensor is often just called the metric. The metric is a symmetric tensor and is an important mathematical tool. As well as being used to raise and lower tensor indices, it also generates the connections which are used to construct the geodesic equations of motion and the Riemann curvature tensor. A convenient means of expressing the metric tensor in combination with the incremental intervals of coordinate distance that it relates to is through the line element d s 2 equals g a b d x a d x b Display style ds caret two equals g underscore ab dx caret a dx caret b. This way of expressing the metric was used by the pioneers of differential geometry. While some relativists consider the notation to be somewhat old-fashioned, many readily switch between this and the alternative notation. G equals g a b d x a D X B display style G equals G underscore ab DX caret a o times DX caret B. The metric tensor is commonly written as a four by four matrix. This matrix is symmetric and thus has ten independent components. Topic invariance. One of the central features of GR is the idea of invariance of physical laws. This invariance can be described in many ways, for example, in terms of local Lorentz covariance, the general principle of relativity, or diffeomorphism covariance. A more explicit description can be given using tensors. The crucial feature of tensors used in this approach is the fact that once a metric is given the operation of contracting a tensor of rank R over all R indices gives a number, an invariant, that is independent of the coordinate chart one uses to perform the contraction. Physically, this means that if the invariant is calculated by any two observers, they will get the same number, thus suggesting that the invariant has some independent significance. Some important invariants in relativity include the Ricci scalar R equals R alpha beta G alpha beta display style R equals R caret alpha beta G underscore alpha beta the Kreshman scalar K equals R a B C D R a B C D display style K equals R caret A B C D R underscore A B C D. Other examples of invariance in relativity include the electromagnetic invariance and various other curvature invariants. Some of the latter finding application in the study of gravitational entropy and the whale curvature hypothesis. Topic. 
Topic: <laughs> Tensor classifications. The classification of tensors is a purely mathematical problem. In GR, however, certain tensors that have a physical interpretation can be classified with the different forms of the tensor usually corresponding to some physics. Examples of tensor classifications useful in general relativity include the Sagra classification of the energy-momentum tensor and the Petrov classification of the whale tensor. There are various methods of classifying these tensors, some of which use tensor invariants. Tensor fields in general relativity Tensor fields on a manifold are maps which attach a tensor to each point of the manifold. This notion can be made more precise by introducing the idea of a fiber bundle, which in the present context means to collect together all the tensors at all points of the manifold, thus bundling them all into one grand object called the tensor bundle. A tensor field is then defined as a map from the manifold to the tensor bundle each point p display style script style p being associated with a tensor at p display style script style p the notion of a tensor field is of major importance in gr for example the geometry around a star is described by a metric tensor at each point so at each point of the spacetime the value of the metric should be given to solve for the paths of material particles another example is the values of the electric and magnetic fields given by the electromagnetic field tensor and the metric at each point around a charged black hole to determine the motion of a charged particle in such a field vector fields are contravariant rank 1 tensor fields Important vector fields in relativity include the four velocity u a equals x a display style script style u caret a equals dot x caret a which is the coordinate distance traveled per unit of proper time the four acceleration a a equals x Display style script style a caret a equals d d o t x caret a, and the four current j a display style script style j caret a, describing the charge and current densities. Other physically important tensor fields in relativity include the following: the stress-energy tensor T a b. Display style script style t caret ab, a symmetric rank two tensor. The electromagnetic field tensor F a b. Display style script style f caret ab, a rank two anti-symmetric tensor. Although the word tensor refers to an object at a point, it is common practice to refer to tensor fields on a spacetime or a region of it as just tensors. At each point of a spacetime on which a metric is defined, the metric can be reduced to the Minkowski form using Sylvester's law of inertia. Topic: <tensorial>, Tensorial derivatives. Before the advent of general relativity, changes in physical processes were generally described by partial derivatives. For example, in describing changes in electromagnetic fields, see Maxwell's equations. Even in special relativity, the partial derivative is still sufficient to describe such changes. However, in general relativity, it is found that derivatives which are also tensors must be used. The derivatives have some common features including that they are derivatives along integral curves of vector fields. The problem in defining derivatives on manifolds that are not flat is that there is no natural way to compare vectors at different points. An extra structure on a general manifold is required to define derivatives. Below are described two important derivatives that can be defined by imposing an additional structure on the manifold in each case. Topic: <laughs> Affine connections. The curvature of a spacetime can be characterized by taking a vector at some point and parallel transporting it along a curve on the spacetime. An affine connection is a rule which describes how to legitimately move a vector along a curve on the manifold without changing its direction. By definition, an affine connection is a bilinear map gamma t 
m times gamma t m gamma t m display style script style gamma t m times gamma t m right arrow gamma t m where gamma t m display style script style gamma t m is a space of all vector fields on the spacetime this bilinear map can be described in terms of a set of connection coefficients also known as Christoffel symbols specifying what happens to components of basis vectors under infinitesimal parallel transport e i e j equals gamma j i k e k Display style nabla underscore e underscore i e underscore j equals gamma underscore g caret k e underscore k. Despite their appearance, the connection coefficients are not the components of a tensor. Generally speaking, there are d three independent connection coefficients at each point of spacetime. The connection is called symmetric or torsion free if gamma j i k equals gamma i j k display style script style gamma underscore g caret k equals gamma underscore i j caret k a symmetric connection has at most one half d2 d plus one unique coefficients for any curve gamma display style script style gamma and two points equals gamma 0 display style script style a equals gamma 0 and b equals gamma t display style script style b equals gamma t on this curve an affine connection gives rise to a map of vectors in the tangent space at a into vectors in the tangent space at b x t equals pi 0 t gamma x 0 display style x t equals pi underscore 0 t gamma x 0 and x t display style script style x t can be computed component wise by solving the differential equation d d T x i t equals c t x i t equals gamma j k i x j t c k t Display style FRAC D D T X carrot I T equals Nabla underscore C T X carrot I T equals Gamma underscore J K carrot I X carrot J T C carrot K T C J T Display style script style C carrot J T being the vector tangent to the curve at the point Gamma T Display style script style gamma t. An important affine connection in general relativity is the Levi-Civita connection, which is a symmetric connection obtained from parallel transporting a tangent vector along a curve whilst keeping the inner product of that vector constant along the curve. The resulting connection coefficients, Christoffel symbols, can be calculated directly from the metric. For this reason, this type of connection is often called a metric connection. Topic: The covariant derivative. Let x display style script style x be a point a display style script style vec a a vector located at x display style script style x and b display style script style vec b a vector field 
the idea of differentiating b display style script style vec b at x display style script style x along the direction of a display style script style vec a in a physically meaningful way can be made sense of by choosing an affine connection and a parameterized smooth curve gamma t display style script style gamma t such that x equals gamma 0 display style script style x equals gamma 0 and a equals d d t gamma 0 display style script style vec a equals d over dt gamma 0 the formula B x equals lim e zero one e pi e zero gamma b gamma e minus b x Display style nabla underscore vec a vec b x equals lim underscore epsilon right arrow zero frac one epsilon left pi underscore epsilon zero gamma vec b gamma epsilon vec b x right for a covariant derivative of b display style script style vec b allo ing Display style script style vec a associated with connection pi display style script style pi turns out to give curve independent results and can be used as a physical definition of a covariant derivative. It can be expressed using connection coefficients y x equals x a b y B x a equals x a b plus gamma b c a x c y b x a Display style nabla underscore vec y vec x equals x caret o underscore b y caret b frac partial partial x caret o equals x caret o underscore b plus gamma underscore b c caret a x caret c y caret b frac partial partial x caret o. The expression in brackets called a covariant derivative of x. Display style script style x with respect to the connection and denoted by x display style script style nabla vec x is more often used in calculations x equals x a b x a d x b equals x a b plus gamma b c a x c x a d x b Display style nabla vec x equals x caret a underscore b frac partial partial x caret a o times dx caret b equals x caret a underscore b plus gamma underscore b c caret a x caret c frac partial partial x caret a o times dx caret b. A covariant derivative of x can thus be viewed as a differential operator acting on a vector field sending it to a type 1, 1 tensor increasing the covariant index by 1 and can be generalized to act on type R, S tensor fields sending them to type R, S plus 1 tensor fields. Notions of parallel transport can then be defined similarly as for the case of vector fields. By definition, a covariant derivative of a scalar field is equal to the regular derivative of the field.
In the literature, there are three common methods of denoting covariant differentiation. D A T D E B C equals A T D E B C equals T D E a B C Display style D underscore A T underscore D dots E carrot B dots C equals Nabla underscore A T underscore D dots E carrot B dots C equals T underscore D dots E A carrot B dots C Many standard properties of regular partial derivatives also apply to covariant derivatives A X B plus y b equals a x b plus a y b a x b y c equals y c a x b plus x b a y c a f x x b equals f a x b plus x b a f Equals F A X B plus X B F X A A C X B equals C A X B C is constant. Display style begin aligned nabla underscore A X caret B plus Y caret B and equals nabla underscore A X caret B plus nabla underscore A Y caret B nabla underscore A X caret B Y caret C and equals Y caret C nabla underscore A X caret B plus X caret B nabla underscore A Y caret C nabla underscore a f x x caret b and equals f nabla underscore a x caret b plus x caret b nabla underscore a f equals f nabla underscore a x caret b plus x caret b partial f over partial x caret out nabla underscore out c x caret b and equals c nabla underscore a x caret b quad c text is constant end aligned in general relativity one usually refers to the covariant derivative which is the one associated with leave Levi Savita affine connection. By definition, Levi Savita connection preserves the metric under parallel transport, therefore, the covariant derivative gives zero when acting on a metric tensor as well as its inverse. It means that we can take the inverse metric tensor in and out of the derivative and use it to raise and lower indices. A T B equals A T C G B C equals G B C A T C Display style Nabla underscore A T carrot B equals Nabla underscore A T underscore C G carrot B C equals G carrot B C Nabla underscore A T underscore C Topic: The Lie derivative. Another important tensorial derivative is the Lie derivative. Unlike the covariant derivative, the Lie derivative is independent of the metric. Although in general relativity, one usually uses an expression that seemingly depends on the metric through the affine connection. Whereas the covariant derivative required an affine connection to allow comparison between vectors at different points, the Lie derivative uses a congruence from a vector field to achieve the same purpose. The idea of lie dragging a function along a congruence leads to a definition of the lie derivative, where the dragged function is compared with the value of the original function at a given point. The lie derivative can be defined for type R, S tensor fields and in this respect can be viewed as a map that sends a type R, S to a type R, S tensor. The lie derivative is usually denoted by L x Display style script style math call l underscore x 
where x display style script style x is the vector field along whose congruence the Lie derivative is taken. The Lie derivative of any tensor along a vector field can be expressed through the covariant derivatives of that tensor and vector field. The Lie derivative of a scalar is just the directional derivative L x phi equals x a a phi equals x a phi x a Display style math call L underscore x phi equals x carrot a nabla underscore a phi equals x carrot a frac partial phi partial x carrot a higher rank objects pick up additional terms when the Lie derivative is taken. For example, the Lie derivative of a type 0, 2 tensor is L x T A B equals x C C T A B plus A X C T C B plus B X C T A C equals X C T A B C plus X A C T C B plus X B C T A C Display style math call L underscore x T underscore ab equals x carrot C nabla underscore C T underscore ab plus nabla underscore A x carrot C T underscore C B plus nabla underscore B x carrot C T underscore A C equals x carrot C T underscore ab C plus x underscore a carrot C T underscore C B plus x underscore B carrot C T underscore A C more generally L X T A one A R B one B S equals X C C T A one A R B one B S minus C X A one T C A R B one B S minus minus C X A R T A one A R minus one C B one B S plus B one X C T A one A R C B S plus plus B S X C T A one A R B one B S minus one C display style begin aligned and math call L underscore X T carrot underscore one L dots a underscore R underscore B underscore one L dots B underscore S equals X carrot C Nabla underscore C T carrot underscore one L dots a underscore R underscore B underscore one L dots B underscore S and quad Nabla underscore C X carrot underscore one T carrot C 
L dots a underscore R underscore B underscore one L dots B underscore S L dots Nabla underscore C X carrot a underscore R T carrot a underscore one L dots a underscore R one C underscore B underscore one L dots B underscore S plus and quad Nabla underscore B underscore one X carrot C T carrot a underscore one L dots a underscore R underscore C L dots B underscore S plus L dots plus Nabla underscore B underscore S X carrot C T carrot a underscore one L dots a underscore R underscore B underscore one L dots B underscore S one C end aligned in fact in the above expression one can replace the covariant derivative of display style script style Nabla underscore a with any torsion free connection tilde display style script style tilde Nabla underscore a or locally with the coordinate dependent derivative Display style script style partial underscore a, showing that the Lie derivative is independent of the metric. The covariant derivative is convenient, however, because it commutes with raising and lowering indices. One of the main uses of the Lie derivative in general relativity is in the study of spacetime symmetries where tensors or other geometrical objects are preserved. In particular, killing symmetry, symmetry of the metric tensor under Lie dragging, occurs very often in the study of spacetimes. Using the formula above, we can write down the condition that must be satisfied for a vector field to generate a killing symmetry L x g a b equals 0 a x b plus b x a equals 0 x C G A B C plus X A C G B C plus X B C G A C equals zero display style begin aligned math call L underscore X G underscore ab and equals zero left right arrow nabla underscore A X underscore B plus nabla underscore B X underscore A and equals zero left right arrow X carrot C G underscore ab C plus X underscore A carrot C G underscore B C plus X underscore B carrot C G underscore A C and equals zero end aligned The Riemann curvature tensor A crucial feature of general relativity is the concept of a curved manifold. A useful way of measuring the curvature of a manifold is with an object called the Riemann curvature tensor. This tensor measures curvature by use of an affine connection by considering the effect of parallel transporting a vector between two points along two curves. The discrepancy between the results of these two parallel transport routes is essentially quantified by the Riemann tensor. This property of the Riemann tensor can be used to describe how initially parallel geodesics diverge. This is expressed by the equation of geodesic deviation and means that the tidal forces experienced in a gravitational field are a result of the curvature of spacetime. Using the above procedure, the Riemann tensor is defined as a type 1, 3 tensor and when fully written out explicitly contains the Christoffel symbols and their first partial derivatives. The Riemann tensor has 20 independent components. The vanishing of all these components over a region indicates that the spacetime is flat in that region. From the viewpoint of geodesic deviation, this means that initially parallel geodesics in that region of spacetime will stay parallel. The Riemann tensor has a number of properties sometimes referred to as the symmetries of the Riemann tensor. Of particular relevance to general relativity are the algebraic and differential Bianchi identities. The connection and curvature of any Riemannian manifold are closely related. The theory of holonomy groups, which are formed by taking linear maps defined by parallel transport around curves on the manifold, providing a description of this relationship. What the Riemann tensor allows us to do is tell, mathematically, whether a space is flat or, if curved, how much curvature takes place in any given region. In order to derive the Riemann curvature tensor we must first recall the definition of the covariant derivative of a tensor with one and two indices. mu v nu equals mu 
v nu minus gamma rho mu nu v rho Display style nabla underscore mu v underscore nu equals partial underscore mu v underscore nu gamma caret rho underscore mu nu v underscore rho sigma v mu nu equals sigma v mu nu minus gamma rho mu sigma V rho nu minus gamma rho nu sigma v mu rho Display style nabla underscore sigma v underscore mu nu equals partial underscore sigma v underscore mu nu gamma carrot rho underscore mu sigma v underscore rho nu gamma carrot rho underscore nu sigma v underscore mu rho. For the formation of the Riemann tensor, the covariant derivative is taken twice with the respect to a tensor of rank one. The equation is set up as follows: sigma mu v nu equals sigma mu v nu equals sigma mu v nu minus gamma rho mu sigma rho v nu minus gamma Rho nu sigma mu v rho equals sigma mu v nu minus gamma alpha nu mu v alpha minus gamma rho mu sigma rho v nu minus gamma alpha nu rho v alpha minus gamma rho nu sigma mu v rho minus gamma alpha rho mu v alpha equals sigma mu v nu minus sigma gamma alpha nu mu v alpha minus gamma rho mu sigma rho v nu plus gamma rho mu sigma gamma alpha nu rho v alpha minus gamma rho nu sigma mu v rho plus gamma rho nu sigma gamma alpha rho mu v alpha equals sigma mu v nu minus sigma gamma alpha nu mu v alpha minus gamma alpha nu mu sigma v alpha minus gamma rho mu sigma rho v nu plus gamma rho 
mu sigma gamma alpha nu rho v alpha minus gamma rho nu sigma mu v rho plus gamma rho nu sigma gamma alpha rho mu v alpha Display style begin aligned nabla underscore sigma mu v underscore nu and equals nabla underscore sigma left nabla underscore mu v underscore nu right and equals partial underscore sigma nabla underscore mu v underscore nu gamma carrot rho underscore mu sigma nabla underscore rho v underscore nu gamma carrot rho underscore nu sigma nabla underscore mu v underscore rho and equals partial underscore sigma partial underscore mu v underscore new gamma carrot alpha underscore new mu v underscore alpha gamma carrot rho underscore mu sigma partial underscore rho v underscore new gamma carrot alpha underscore new rho v underscore alpha gamma carrot rho underscore new sigma partial underscore mu v underscore rho gamma carrot alpha underscore rho mu v underscore alpha and equals partial underscore sigma partial underscore mu v underscore new partial underscore sigma Gamma carrot alpha underscore new mu v underscore alpha gamma carrot rho underscore mu sigma partial underscore rho v underscore new plus gamma carrot rho underscore mu sigma gamma carrot alpha underscore new rho v underscore alpha gamma carrot rho underscore new sigma partial underscore mu v underscore rho plus gamma carrot rho underscore new sigma gamma carrot alpha underscore rho mu v underscore alpha and equals partial underscore Sigma partial underscore mu v underscore new partial underscore sigma gamma carrot alpha underscore new mu v underscore alpha gamma carrot alpha underscore new mu partial underscore sigma v underscore alpha gamma carrot rho underscore mu sigma partial underscore rho v underscore new plus gamma carrot rho underscore mu sigma gamma carrot alpha underscore new rho v underscore alpha gamma carrot rho underscore new sigma partial underscore mu v underscore rho plus gamma carrot rho underscore new sigma gamma carrot alpha underscore rho mu v underscore alpha and aligned similarly we have mu sigma v nu equals mu sigma v nu minus mu gamma alpha nu sigma v alpha minus gamma alpha nu sigma mu v alpha minus gamma rho sigma mu rho v nu plus gamma rho sigma mu gamma alpha nu rho v alpha minus gamma rho nu mu sigma v rho plus gamma rho nu mu gamma alpha rho sigma v alpha Display style nabla underscore mu sigma v underscore new equals partial underscore mu partial underscore sigma v underscore new partial underscore mu gamma carrot alpha underscore new sigma v underscore alpha gamma carrot alpha underscore new sigma partial underscore mu v underscore alpha gamma carrot rho underscore sigma mu partial underscore rho v underscore new plus gamma carrot rho underscore sigma mu gamma carrot alpha underscore New rho v underscore alpha gamma carrot rho underscore new mu partial underscore sigma v underscore rho plus gamma carrot rho underscore new mu gamma carrot alpha underscore rho sigma v underscore alpha. Subtracting the two equations, swapping dummy indices, and using the symmetry of Christoffel symbols leaves sigma mu v nu minus mu. Sigma V 
nu equals mu gamma alpha nu sigma minus sigma gamma alpha nu mu plus gamma rho nu sigma gamma alpha rho mu minus gamma rho nu mu gamma alpha rho sigma v alpha Display style nabla underscore sigma mu v underscore nu nabla underscore mu sigma v underscore nu equals partial underscore mu gamma caret alpha underscore nu sigma partial underscore sigma gamma caret alpha underscore nu mu plus gamma caret rho underscore nu sigma gamma caret alpha underscore rho mu gamma caret rho underscore nu mu gamma caret alpha underscore rho sigma v underscore alpha or R nu mu sigma alpha v alpha equals mu gamma alpha nu sigma minus sigma gamma alpha nu mu plus gamma Rho nu sigma gamma alpha rho mu minus gamma rho nu mu gamma alpha rho sigma v alpha Display style R underscore nu mu sigma carrot alpha V underscore alpha equals partial underscore mu gamma carrot alpha underscore nu sigma partial underscore sigma gamma carrot alpha underscore nu mu plus gamma carrot rho underscore nu sigma gamma carrot alpha underscore rho mu gamma carrot rho underscore nu mu gamma carrot alpha underscore rho sigma V underscore alpha Finally the Riemann curvature tensor is written as R nu mu sigma alpha equals mu gamma alpha nu sigma minus sigma gamma alpha nu mu plus gamma rho nu sigma gamma alpha rho mu minus gamma rho nu mu gamma alpha rho sigma Display style R underscore new mu sigma carrot alpha equals partial underscore mu gamma carrot alpha underscore new sigma partial underscore sigma gamma carrot alpha underscore new mu plus gamma carrot rho underscore new sigma gamma carrot alpha underscore rho mu gamma carrot rho underscore new mu gamma carrot alpha underscore rho sigma you can contract indices to make the tensor covariant simply by multiplying by the metric, which will be useful when working with Einstein's field equations. G alpha lambda r nu mu sigma lambda equals r alpha nu mu sigma Display style g underscore alpha lambda r underscore nu mu sigma caret lambda equals r underscore alpha nu mu sigma, and by further decomposition, g alpha mu r alpha nu mu sigma equals r nu sigma Display style g caret alpha mu r underscore alpha nu mu sigma equals r underscore nu sigma. 
This tensor is called the Ricci tensor which can also be derived by setting alpha display style alpha and mu display style mu in the Riemann tensor to the same indus and summing over them then the curvature scalar can be found by going one step further g nu sigma r nu sigma equals r display style g caret nu sigma r underscore nu sigma equals r so now we have three different objects the riemann curvature tensor r nu mu sigma alpha display style r underscore nu mu sigma caret alpha or r alpha nu mu sigma display style r underscore alpha nu mu sigma the ricci tensor r nu sigma display style r underscore nu sigma the scalar curvature r display style r all of which are useful in calculating solutions to einstein's field equations topic the energy momentum tensor the sources of any gravitational field matter and energy is represented in relativity by a type 0 2 symmetric tensor called the energy momentum tensor it is closely related to the ricci tensor being a second rank tensor in four dimensions the energy momentum tensor may be viewed as a 4 by 4 matrix the various admissible matrix types, called Jordan forms cannot all occur, as the energy conditions that the energy momentum tensor is forced to satisfy rule out certain forms. <laughs> energy conservation In GR, there is a local law for the conservation of energy momentum. It can be succinctly expressed by the tensor equation T a B B equals zero display style T carrot ab underscore B equals zero the corresponding statement of local energy conservation in special relativity is T a B B equals zero display style T carrot ab underscore B equals zero this illustrates the rule of thumb that partial derivatives go to covariant derivatives. The Einstein field equations The Einstein field equations are the core of general relativity theory. The FA describe how mass and energy as represented in the stress energy tensor are related to the curvature of spacetime as represented in the Einstein tensor. In abstract index notation, the FA reads as follows: G A B plus lambda G A B equals 8 pi G C four T A B display style G underscore ab plus lambda G underscore ab equals eight pi G over C carrot four T underscore ab where G A B display style script style G underscore ab is the Einstein tensor lambda display style script style lambda is the cosmological constant c display style script style c is the speed of light in a vacuum and g display style script style g is the gravitational constant which comes from newton's law of universal gravitation the solutions of the fa are metric tensors the FA, being nonlinear differential equations for the metric, are often difficult to solve. There are a number of strategies used to solve them. 
For example, one strategy is to start with an ansatz or an educated guess of the final metric, and refine it until it is specific enough to support a coordinate system but still general enough to yield a set of simultaneous differential equations with unknowns that can be solved for. Metric tensors resulting from cases where the resultant differential equations can be solved exactly for a physically reasonable distribution of energy momentum are called exact solutions. Examples of important exact solutions include the Schwarzschild solution and the friedman lemaitre robertson walker solution. The EIH approximation plus other references e.g. Jarich and Jang, 1975 Motion of a Body in General Relativity, JMP, Volume 16 Issue 1. The geodesic equations Once the FA are solved to obtain a metric, it remains to determine the motion of inertial objects in the spacetime. In general relativity, it is assumed that inertial motion occurs along time-like and null geodesics of spacetime as parameterized by proper time. Geodesics are curves that parallel transport their own tangent vector u Display style script style vec u i e u u equals zero. Display style script style nabla underscore vec u vec u equals zero. This condition, the geodesic equation, can be written in terms of a coordinate system x a display style script style x caret a with the tangent vector u a equals d x a d tau display style script style u caret a equals frac dx caret a d tau x a plus gamma a b c x B x c equals zero. Display style d d o t x caret a plus gamma caret a underscore b c dot x caret b dot x caret c equals zero. Where display style script style dot denotes the derivative by proper time d d tau display style script style d d tau with tau parametrizing proper time along the curve and making manifest the presence of the Christoffel symbols a principal feature of general relativity is to determine the paths of particles and radiation in gravitational fields this is accomplished by solving the geodesic equations the fa relate the total matter energy distribution to the curvature of spacetime their nonlinearity leads to a problem in determining the precise motion of matter in the resultant spacetime. For example, in a system composed of one planet orbiting a star, the motion of the planet is determined by solving the field equations with the energy momentum tensor the sum of that for the planet and the star. The gravitational field of the planet affects the total spacetime geometry and hence the motion of objects. It is therefore reasonable to suppose that the field equations can be used to derive the geodesic equations. When the energy momentum tensor for a system is that of dust, it may be shown by using the local conservation law for the energy momentum tensor that the geodesic equations are satisfied exactly. Topic: <laughs> Lagrangian formulation. The issue of deriving the equations of motion or the field equations in any physical theory is considered by many researchers to be appealing. A fairly universal way of performing these derivations is by using the techniques of variational calculus, the main objects used in this being Lagrangians. Many consider this approach to be an elegant way of constructing a theory, others as merely a formal way of expressing a theory usually, the Lagrangian construction is performed after the theory has been developed. <laughs> Mathematical techniques for analyzing spacetimes Having outlined the basic mathematical structures used in formulating the theory, some important mathematical techniques that are employed in investigating spacetimes will now be discussed. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Frame fields. A frame field is an orthonormal set of four vector fields, one timelike, three spacelike, defined on a spacetime. Each frame field can be thought of as representing an observer in the spacetime moving along the integral curves of the timelike vector field. Every tensor quantity can be expressed in terms of a frame field, in particular, the metric tensor takes on a particularly convenient form. When allied with coframe fields, frame fields provide a powerful tool for analyzing spacetimes and physically interpreting the mathematical results. Symmetry vector fields Some modern techniques in analyzing spacetimes rely heavily on using spacetime symmetries, which are infinitesimally generated by vector fields usually defined locally on a spacetime that preserve some feature of the spacetime. The most common type of such symmetry vector fields include killing vector fields which preserve the metric structure and their generalizations called generalized killing vector fields. Symmetry vector fields find extensive application in the study of exact solutions in general relativity and the set of all such vector fields usually forms a finite dimensional Lie algebra. Topic: The Cauchy problem. The Cauchy problem, sometimes called the initial value problem, is the attempt at finding a solution to a differential equation given initial conditions. In the context of general relativity, it means the problem of finding solutions to Einstein's field equations, a system of hyperbolic partial differential equations, given some initial data on a hypersurface. Studying the Cauchy problem allows one to formulate the concept of causality in general relativity, as well as parametrizing solutions of the field equations. Ideally, one desires global solutions, but usually local solutions are the best that can be hoped for. Typically, solving this initial value problem requires selection of particular coordinate conditions. Topic: <inaudible> Spinner formalism. Spinners find several important applications in relativity. Their use is a method of analyzing spacetimes using tetrads, in particular in the Newman-Penrose formalism is important. Another appealing feature of spinors in general relativity is the condensed way in which some tensor equations may be written using the spinner formalism. For example, in classifying the whale tensor, determining the various Petrov types becomes much easier when compared with the tensorial counterpart. Regi <inaudible> calculus <inaudible> <inaudible> Regi calculus is a formalism which chops up a Lorentzian manifold into discrete chunks, four-dimensional simplicial blocks, and the block edge lengths are taken as the basic variables. A discrete version of the Einstein-Hilbert action is obtained by considering so-called deficit angles of these blocks, a zero deficit angle corresponding to no curvature. This novel idea finds application in approximation methods in numerical relativity and quantum gravity, the latter using a generalization of Regi calculus. Topic. Singularity theorems In general relativity, it was noted that, under fairly generic conditions, gravitational collapse will inevitably result in a so-called singularity. A singularity is a point where the solutions to the equations become infinite, indicating that the theory has been probed at inappropriate ranges. Topic. Numerical relativity. Numerical relativity is the sub-field of general relativity which seeks to solve Einstein's equations through the use of numerical methods. Finite difference, finite element and pseudo-spectral methods are used to approximate the solution to the partial differential equations which arise. Novel techniques developed by numerical relativity include the excision method and the puncture method for dealing with the singularities arising in black hole spacetimes. Common research topics include black holes and neutron stars. Topic. Perturbation methods The nonlinearity of the Einstein field equations often leads one to consider approximation methods in solving them. For example, an important approach is to linearize the field equations. 
Techniques from perturbation theory find ample application in such areas. See also Ricci calculus Notes <laughs>